living in dark days, but the God who is all light watches over his own. He sees through the shadows and he can see us through the most difficult seasons of life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And today on Enjoying the Journey, Scott Pauley is walking us through one of the most famous and familiar scriptures, Psalm 23, to help us get a fresh glimpse of the shepherd in the shadows. Let's join the study now in God's Word. When I ask people what their favorite psalm is, uh, the number one answer that I hear is Psalm 23. And it is an amazing psalm. Maybe it's your favorite. If not, maybe it's one of your favorites. Maybe it'll become your favorite after this study. It is one, though, I must tell you personally, that is, is at this juncture in my life just beginning, really, I think, to open up to me. Isn't that funny? We commit it to memory as children. I learned Psalm 23. It's only six verses long when I was just a boy. Uh, When I started preaching as a teenager, it was one of the first passages I ever preached from. I remember as a teenager preaching from Psalm 23, and I read and studied and and dug and found so many wonderful nuggets and truths. Uh, But, you know, some things you have to live to learn. And uh, truthfully, after some experience in life, some scripture starts opening up to you more and more because you say, ah, I understand that now. I, I see that now. Well, I really feel like at this, at this time in my own experience with the Lord, Psalm 23 is coming to mean more and more to me. And my prayer is that through our study, not only will the Psalm mean more to you, the Lord will mean more to you. Remember, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Now, the psalm, though it's only six verses long, really divides itself into two parts. And maybe this will help you to remember the breakdown of Psalm 23 and the truth that we're going to study. Basically, there are two halves. Verses 1 through 3 go together, and verses 4 through 6 go together. Uh, I believe that each of these sections of Psalm 23 really revolve around a distinct phrase, and I want to give those to you today. The first three verses really revolves around this expression, He leadeth me. In fact, we find that thought, at least, twice in the opening three verses. In verse 2, He leadeth me beside the still waters, and in verse 3, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. So, now, the great opening truth of Psalm 23, if you really want to know the Lord as your shepherd, it's not just that he makes you feel better. The Lord doesn't come just so you'll feel better. The Lord comes into our lives so that he can lead us. And the whole idea of him leading presupposes that we are following. Then the second half of Psalm 23, verses 4 through 6, really revolves around this expression found in verse 4, Thou art with me. So, in the first part, uh, we see his, his work in us and his leading of us. In the second part, uh, we continue to see his work, but the emphasis really is on his presence. He is with us. In fact, repeatedly, thy rod, thy staff, thou preparest a table, thou anointest my head. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's all about being with the Lord and the Lord being with us. So let's back up and let's begin by looking at the opening three verses of Psalm 23. Would you read it with me? And if you don't have a Bible open in front of you, perhaps you have it committed to memory, quote it with me. Ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so we have the first three verses of Psalm 23 and the great truth of the Lord's leading in our lives. A few years ago, I took Psalm 23 as my my psalm for the year, and I studied it and made it my prayer for the year and tried to really spend some time with it and live in it. And one of the things that God used it to do in my life was not just comfort me, but to convict me. He convicted me about how many areas of my life where I was trying to be the leader. You know, isn't it interesting? We love to read Psalm 23 and just revel in the presence of God and talk about the peace of God and how wonderful the Lord is, how he takes care of us. 
But may I ask you a most thought-provoking question? When was the last time you knew the definite leading of the Lord in your life and you followed him? See, we want the Lord to come to us, but we don't always want to follow him. Can I tell you what I'm learning about the Lord? I'm learning that the Lord is not looking for planners. The Lord is looking for followers. He's the great planner. Don't you know that the Lord's plan is better than any plan we could concoct? His ways and thoughts are higher than our own. He can do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or even think. The Lord doesn't need our ingenuity and our clever ideas. He must laugh at some of those thoughts that we have from time to time. And yet I'll tell you what he is looking for. He is looking for the heart of an obedient sheep that simply says, wherever you lead me, I'll go. You see, we want to live planned lives. Maybe you're like me. You want to plan it all out, have all the answers, work it all out on paper, see how it's all going to end. Here's the problem with that. The Christian life is not a planned life. It is a led life. And the Lord is always looking for followers. In fact, in Matthew 16, verse 24, he said, If any of you want to follow me, uh, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In other words, you have to die to your ideas. You'll have to die to your agenda. You'll have to die to your, your thoughts and simply say, Lord, you take the next step and show me the next step, and I will take it behind you. In fact, that word follow that Jesus used in Matthew 16, 24 literally means to get in line. You ever see somebody walking in line? I passed a group of children the other day from a preschool. They were all following step by step, right in line behind the leader. And you think, well, what a beautiful little picture for little children. Friend, that's what we are, little children. And we have a wonderful leader, one that can always be trusted and should always be followed, and that is the Lord, our shepherd. And it's not enough to simply say he wants to lead us. We must say he is leading me. It's not enough to simply say, he is the shepherd and he's out in front. No, I'm the sheep, Lord. I've got my eye on you and I am following you. I'm with you, Lord. Did you ever play follow the leader as a child? The great struggle with children playing follow the leader is who gets to be the leader. Isn't that always the great problem? And so here's a, a simple way to work around that with children. Whoever's backyard they're playing in gets to be the leader. Well, dear listener, we're all playing in God's backyard We live on God's earth, breathe God's air, enjoy God's sunshine, drink God's water, eat God's food, and listen to God's birds sing. Don't you think the least we could do is let him set the pace, let him chart the course, let him give the direction, let him lead us. I want you to pray personally and privately somewhere today. Ask the Lord, Lord, am I truly following your leadership? Am I wandering off on my own? You know, we we talk about all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. We speak of that just to lost people. But I've found that many times those of us who are in the flock, so to speak, who belong to the Lord, we're still trying to make our own way. We're still wandering. Uh, The hymn writer said, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Dear friend, if you truly want to have the life of God's blessing, you must be willing to let the Lord lead you. And so my challenge for today to all of us is simply this. Follow the leader, and the Lord is the leader. Uh, Don't follow your own heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Don't follow the course of this world. That leads to destruction. And don't just follow the latest trend and fad that comes along and what culture says. Instead, determined by the grace of God, you're going to follow your good shepherd. Then you can say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you know Psalm 23? Or do you know the shepherd of Psalm 23? Our prayer is that this study will bring you to a more intimate fellowship with the shepherd. Be sure to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, for daily encouragement. There are many resources available to help your joy. Also on our website, click the events page to see Scott's preaching itinerary, and if you live close to one of his meetings, he would be thrilled to meet you. Again, thank you for listening today, and we hope you'll join us for the next study of The Shepherd in the Shadows here on Enjoying the Journey.